John Sparks is UNICEF's chief operating officer. Now, he's just been to Domiz. That's the biggest refugee camp in Iraq. He joins me now. What was it like? Well, we went to Domis to highlight the humanitarian situation in Syria. As you say, one and a half million people have fled the country, including 750,000 uh, children. In, in, in Domis camp, Domis was set up for 20,000 people a year ago. There are now 40,000 people living there. Um, and there are 500 people coming in every day. Uh, there, there, are, there, there isn't enough water, there, there isn't enough sanitation, there aren't enough schools for the children. And these are children who fled bomb bombing and, and, and fled uh, bullets. What are some of the stories they told you what, that really stand out yeah. to you? Well, I, I, I heard of one, one child who was um, shot in the arm while in their father's arms, just 200 metres from their house in Syria. And the bullet went through the father's arm and into the child's arm. Um, that, that was one story. The child is on the mend physically but emotionally um, it will take many, many years. Um, I also met Serbus, who was a disabled boy. Um, in Syria, he'd lived in Damascus with, with his family. He had an adapted home. He went to school. Um, since being a refugee, he hasn't been to school for seven months. He doesn't like to go out anymore. This is, this is going to scar him for many, many years. What is it that people around the world are watching the situation with the refugees in Iraq and elsewhere and hearing what UNICEF is doing and the plight of these children actually do that's tangible? Okay. I mean, what UNICEF is doing is, is making sure there's access to clean water, uh, making sure that children have schools. In Domis, for example, there are 13,000 children. Only 3,000 so far are going to school, but that's 3,000 school places created in, in, in the last year. Um, everything we're doing and, and, and courageous UNICEF staff on the ground are doing is helping, um, but we just need to be able to do more, and that takes resource and money. And it's in, you know, in Iraq, it, that's a country that's itself trying to get on its feet, yeah. the, where its own people have suffered a lot and seen so much violence, and there are so yeah. many Iraqi refugees. How difficult it is, because of the lack of infrastructure or organization, yeah. to actually help? Well, the, the Iraqi people we spoke to in, in the area were, were generous. They knew they needed to help their, their, their neighbors, um, but they were very honest as well that they need the international community to support them if they're going to do that. What's your message, UNICEF's message, to the Syrian government? And I mean, are you in touch with them about the situation? What are you, from a humanitarian point of view, asking okay. for? UNICEF will be talking to all parties, reminding them of, of UNICEF's duty to uphold the rights of, of children. And we're really trying to focus attention on the humanitarian issue. Um, UNICEF's leaders have called for um, all parties to, to, to make efforts for a political settlement, but we're focused on the humanitarian issues and, and, and the plight of, of children. The, 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 there's a risk of a, an absolute lost generation of Syrian children. Many people around the world, millions have never been in a refugee camp, don't know what it's like. We, we live in surreal environments compared yeah. to what, 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 what you've witnessed and what many people are going through. Just can you describe to someone who's yeah. never stood in the middle yeah. of all that, like what, what it feels, tastes, yeah. smells like? It was crowded, it was hot, the fact that there was no sewage infrastructure was, was, was tangible. Um, yet people were getting on with their lives. They fled from bombs, but they were setting up shops and, and cafes, but not enough water. Um, one toilet for every 80 tents when there should be a toilet for every 20. I think, I think people can imagine what that feels and smells like. John Sparks, UNICEF's chief operating officer, just having been to Domiz, one of the biggest refugee camps in Iraq. Thank you.